Hey guys, now we're going to go through the MRI customer summary. This is literally just a summary of two of the most powerful sheets in this model, which are the calculations for your monthly and your annual revenue. Now the, the calculations for this are pretty long, so I made this so you can quickly just see the outputs from the waterfalls without having to really dig into those calculations, which might look a little bit scary. But of course, you want to know what's in them. You want to see what the outputs are. So this is just it. So it starts out with a summary. And then we'll dig into the MRR, um, your bookings, and your customer numbers. So we'll start out at the top. The summary. These are just some summaries of, of the key numbers like your KPI sheet. So we see here your ARR, which is just 12 times your MRR. Here we have our MRR by package basic premium pro, the new MRR by each package, the new customers per package. The difference between your MRR and your customers is just the an application of your ARPA effectively. The total number of customers that you have. Now we have our bookings. Our bookings are different from our MRR because it's when you actually book the revenue. So if we have annual customers, we take the 12 month value of those people up front as opposed to MRR, which is just like on a monthly recurring basis, right? We have a new customer annual bookings. So those are your annual part of the bookings, which are used for some of your KPI calculations. We have the new annual customers, your ARPA per new customer. So we'll see for your basic that's 65 and it stays pretty much consistently over time as does your premium pro. We'll see our total customer ARPA, which is effectively the same as in new customers. But if you make assumptions that you're changing your ARPA over time, then your new customers and the weighted average of the previous ones may end up becoming different. Okay. And so if you're changing a lot of assumptions, you want to understand like how that's varying. We'll see here the total number of customers that are churning out. And this obviously will increase over time as your customers increase. Our churn on a dollar basis, MR basis, and the churn that's coming out of your bookings. So when you have your renewal period of, which will be if you stick the assumption of 12 months, um, you'll see that your um, bookings will churn out more along that period. Now we have here a waterfall for your MRR on a monthly, annual, and a total. So to calculate the MRR, we want to take the monthly part, which is just the simple um, monthly MRR that's coming in, add your annual MRR, which is we're turning the annual calculation into a monthly one, and adding those up so that you know what your total MRR is right on a monthly basis. So how do we calculate the monthly MRR? Well, we have our basic, our premium, our pro, and this goes to your total, right? So we'll go through these line by line so that we don't have to get the same level of detail in the monthly and annual sheets. So you start out with your um, start of month. Now, this new MRR is actually mainly your existing uh, clients, which you put into your actual PL and these get added into the model. So there will be some new customers, but understand that right here we've included your current ones into those forecasts so that we can continue on your MRR. So let's look at the second month. So we'll see that we've got new MRR of 500 bucks. We deduct a churn of $21, which is around two ish percent of your numbers. Now, there are package switchings between your basic premium and your pro. So we'll see here that we're adding the people who are going down from your premium and your pro to basics and we're deduct deducting the people who on a on that month go from your basic to your premium and your basic to your pro. All right. So you need to deduct those to understand how much MRI is actually within that package. And then the next line we have is expansion revenue. Now there's two ways that you can calculate this in our expansion revenue sheet, and that's by adding modules or adding seats. Here we're doing it on a module basis. So this will pull in the expansion revenue that's happening. 
and add that to MRR. So we'll notice here that the expansion revenue is a lot more in this month than it is in this. So it's 207 versus 60. So on the module basis, we assume at some point in time you launch a new product and the customers will adopt that. In your calculations, you just assume a percentage of all your customers that will adopt that. So we're only releasing this product now. So we assume that that percentage of all your customers will be adopting it. And that the next month, it's only the new customers who get added on with the option to upgrade that will do so. So your first month is always going to be the biggest and it'll um, quickly scop down and progress over time depending on the number of customers you have. And then your end of month MRR is a summary of your starting MRR plus your new MRR, deduct to churn, add your downgrade from premium and your pro, deduct your upgrades to premium pro, add your expansion revenue, and that gets your end of month. Um, and so your start of month and end of month will be the same. Now our premium calculation calculates exactly the same, but we'll see that the uh, additions is an upgrade from Brasic and a downgrade from Pro, and you deduct an upgrade to Pro and downgrade to Basic. And for your Pro, in similar logic, you can go from your, uh, you'll get additions from Basic and Premium, and you'll go downwards to Basic and Premium from your Pro. These then add up across the three packages to give you your total amount. So we'll see the new MR, the churn, and then instead of adding those four lines of basic premiums, ups and downs, uh, we just put the net amount across those. Add the expansion revenue and that gives you your end of month. Now for our annual calculation, it's the same logic. We've got our MR at the start of the month, and we're at the end of the month and we make all those additions the same thing the customers the churn the upgrades the downgrades but it's from the annual calculations and that gets your total amount now our total basic mrr just simply adds these two up here and here just the sum of those both and that gets your total mrr for that now for customers it's exactly the same thing so New customers are added on. These are basically, again, the first month is coming from your PL actuals. The next month, this is just coming out of your forecast. Deductions of churn, upgrades, packet switching, upgrades, downgrades. And you end up with this, which is just your new customers, less churn. We don't have the packet switching because they effectively just net themselves out. You do the same thing for your annual and just add the two up again and that tells you your total number of customers per package or for the total on an ongoing monthly basis. Now for the bookings, the same logic applies but it's calculated just a little bit differently because for the annual people it's not on a monthly basis, it's on renewals. So the assumption in this model, which you can change, is that people will be purchasing up front for 12 months. That means that you're not really going to see any numbers here for 12 months, which boom, it starts happening. And so we'll see that the activity happens effectively every 12 months. And so here what we do is we take the total number of customers which are happening over time. And then at a certain point, those people have uh, a renewal call and they can either renew, they can either leave you or churn, they can move upwards or downwards between the packages and they can also opt to get expansion revenue, which is, we'll see coming in here. So we'll see people are renewing, that there's churn, there's packet switching, and that we have incremental revenue coming in. And so you add these up and that shows you what's happening, but there's not really activity until 12 months when people can really do that. Except you can see that with our uh, expansion revenue, they also have the opportunity to your existing people have the opportunity to adopt your expansion revenue when you launch those new products. So that's why we're starting to see some expansion revenue before that 12 month period, because you can sell to them still anyway, right? It's additional revenue. We don't take the expansion revenue as a typical booking as like a 12 month upfront for the annual customers. Now we'll do the same thing for your monthly guys. And what we do is we've just morphed your monthly numbers into the format uh, for the annual guys. So it's effectively the same calculation that we had in the 
uh, MRR section, but just standardized so that we can easily add things up and follow the logic. That's why you'll see like an NA here for the renewals because people just are effectively renewing every month, right? So we have our churns, our packet switching, expansion revenue to your end of month. We do those for each of the three packages and then your total bookings just as you can see here, just adds the two up and then you get your total bookings. Cool, right? Um, now I understand that everything I just said might be a little bit difficult to follow. Um, I can tell you it took quite a long time to make this as simple as possible and try and get you really accurate correct, um, calculations. Uh, feel free to follow and go through the logic and make sure you're happy with it. But uh, go through the numbers yourself and just see do they actually make sense or not. Um, that's probably the sense check is probably the best thing to do just to understand really what's happening and do they logically make sense for you. And then you can track through all your KPIs and your summaries. And this is a great way of understanding your assumptions. Hopefully that was cool. <laughs>